All right, so today we are going to be spending 100 days in Minecraft One Block. Now, I'm sure a lot of you already know what this is, but for those of you who may not, Minecraft One Block is just that. It's only one block. This block can go through 10 different stages of upgrades the more you break it, and along the way, it can spawn in hostile mobs, friends, and even chests. Finally, after its 10th upgrade, it will even spawn you in an end portal. So, that is my goal for today's video. To expand my island as much as possible, upgrade my one block through all 10 stages, and take on the Ender Dragon. I hope you guys like this video. If you do, please show your support by hitting that like button and subscribing. It's only two clicks and it would really mean a lot to me. Also consider following my Twitch. And with that, let's just jump into it. On my first day here, obviously I really only had one thing to do on this tiny little block, and that's to break it over and over and over again. Like I said, it can spawn a whole bunch of different stuff, like wood and chests and all of that. And uh, pro tip, don't stand on the corner of a chest when you break it on Minecraft one block. Otherwise, you will fall into the void and embarrassingly die. So once I got back, I mined out a few more blocks and decided to grab myself some tools to help further along this process just a little bit faster. And immediately got myself a pet pig, which is awesome. Pet with a pig. I'm going to eat you later. Next, I got a chest with a water bucket, which enables me to actually place a block underneath my island to help expand things out, but also to make sure blocks like sand and gravel later won't fall. And with that, we got our upgrade, and officially begins phase one. Planes. So basically just grass and wood and stuff like that, and hey, another pig! I can't wait to eat you later too. But for now, I don't want you guys falling off, so I built them a pen to keep them safe so they don't fall in the void and die prematurely. After a little bit more mining, I got them a pet cow. So I shoved him in the pen as well. Congratulations, you are now going to be trapped here forever as well as this sheep. Now this sheep initially didn't want to go in because, uh, uh, the sheep's kind of fat, like me, so uh, just give him a little bit of extra push and there you go. <laughs> just cram everybody in there. I then spent the rest of the night mining until finally I got this benevolent gift, which marks the end of phase one, and we can upgrade on to phase two. I decided to use all of my dirt to expand my island a little bit. This enabled me to plant some saplings in hopes that they would grow and I could further along my island even more. Began phase two, mining out all my stone. Like I said, as you can see, everything that is found underground. And apparently mushroom cows can be found underground? I, I don't know why they spawned in this phase, but yeah. The mushroom cow is actually pretty helpful because if you use a bowl and right click them, it will give you mushroom soup. So they're essentially unlimited food. So Obviously, I kept him in my pen, and that brought us to sunrise of day two. I decided not only to expand my island, but to actually lower it down one. This made it so that way my one block was elevated, so if I ever wanted to create an automated process to travel the blocks in the future, it would be easier. As you can see, I also did get my first mob to kill to finally get that achievement. I didn't have a sword, but luckily I had my handy dandy axe to make that a little bit easier. After a little bit of mining, some rabbits appeared and- OH MY GOD! <gasps> <laughs> Dude, I swear that rabbit had a death wish. I actually thought it just jumped off my island. Yeah, um, I can just finish that for you there, little buddy. Goodbye. Yeah, hey, let me get the other one too. Oh, <laughs> he knows what I'm doing. Oh, I swear these things are like almost jumping off. I have never seen such crazy bunnies in my life, dude. Anyway, after I got rid of them, I continued lowering my island down just a bit using the cobblestone that I mined because I didn't really have any other block. So I continued mining and I got even more bunnies. So yeah, we can just go ahead and get rid of them right now. And oh my gosh. What was that? Uh, what are the odds that that tree would grow at that exact second? I have never in my life seen anything like that ever. That is just... <laughs> it's ridiculous. But after a while, I did lower out a ton of my island, and I did get the idea. I cooked some of my iron to make some shears to get the wool from that sheep to make a bed and bring us to day three. I finally finished lowering my island with these last few blocks here, and I also expanded my farm just a little bit 
so why these animals had a little bit more room to move around so that way PETA wouldn't come after me. I then went ahead and started a farm since I had one whole carrot. I guess I could start with that and hopefully an entire carrot farm and much more blocks. And for the rest of the day, I continued mining until I got my benevolent gift finishing the second phase so that way we could upgrade into our third phase. And while I was waiting, I just, I got bored so I grabbed my bed and I figured, heck, we just sleep the night away, start us on <laughs> day four. Woke up, had a little snack, still up Upgrading. Yes, I know. Takes forever. But finally got there, and Icy Tundra is phase three. Which is nice because it's mostly snow, and I have a shovel which breaks that fast, so hopefully we can quickly get to phase four. For convenience sake, I made a couple extra chests, went ahead and sorted everything, continued mining, and what? No, dog! Where are you going? No! He's killing my sheep! No! I, I couldn't honestly bring myself to kill the dog to save the sheep, because I favor the dog. Way more than the sheep. I don't know. It was a bit crazy. She's a bit crazy. Decided to name the dog Sally. So yeah, that's fun. Hi, Sally. How you doing? Caught the remnants of my sheep and continued mining to get these skeletons here. Which is actually really nice because I can kill them, get the bones, and tame Sally. Uh, but that didn't work. At this point, I went ahead and expanded my island even more. I decided to use wood because I knew that would be the most abundant resource I would have in the future with my wood farm. So eventually, I would also replace all of this cobblestone to wood and here I also expanded my tree farm. I went mining a little bit more and oh my gosh it's an ice fox it's the cutest no <laughs> and now okay the fox is safe but now he's killing my chickens are you done are you can you stop killing my chickens are you just gonna look at that last chicken are you fine nope you're not fine you're killing okay that's Fantastic. After mining some more, I got some more skeletons. Hopefully they would give me the bones I need to tame Sally and... <gasps> Sally? No! Are you kidding me? The skeleton killed Sally? What? This has got to be the worst experience, the worst day of Minecraft I've had in so long. You were never officially mine, Sally. I never officially tamed you, but you were the first dog that I saw, and I will never forget you. This one's to you, Sally. Shortly afterwards, I did get another dog. I had a couple of bones, so I used those, tamed him, and decided to name him Bucky. So there you go, my first official tamed dog. So I led him over to safety, sat him down, and had him watch my trees here, I guess. I don't know, I just wanted him safe. I went back to mining, and that's when a monster party started. I wasn't really sure what that was, but I eventually, uh, you know, figured it out. A bunch of mobs were spawning, and I basically immediately died. I built some cover here, hopefully to stay safe, and nope. Skeleton just took me out. Easy peasy. After a little bit of battling, I did manage to take most of them out. And as you can see here, I'm on one half a heart, just absolutely juking out this last skeleton trying not to die. I don't know why I was afraid to die. I, I could have just died. It didn't really matter. But yeah, after I took care of that, I went ahead and separated all of my animals into three different pens just for convenience sake. And so I could easily breed them and they didn't have to worry about cramming. After that, like I said earlier, I wanted to replace this entire floor with just planks. So so I broke all of the cobblestone and slowly but surely started replacing that over the next couple days. And here I am finally finishing it all up, filling it all in, except of course for that one stone which I obviously can never ever break for any reason whatsoever. After all of these days I finally had a surplus of carrots so I quickly bred some of my pigs and went back to mining. And in no time flat, finally I managed to get that benevolent gift to upgrade us to our next phase. Next, I actually wanted to start a wheat farm to continue breeding my cows, but I realized I didn't have any seeds. That's when I figured out I could actually place down some of my dirt here, get some grass, and use the bone meal to get actual grass blocks to get seeds in the future. I wanted more grass blocks than just one, so I AFK'd for a day to let that grass grow, but uh, unfortunately, after literally an entire day, it expanded one whole block. I didn't want to wait any longer, so I just used the bone meal, and from all of this, I literally managed to only get one seed. Which I guess was better than nothing. You had to start somewhere, I guess. After doing a little bit more mining, I came across a couple of turtles. And I was a little tempted to shove them off because they're not really useful. But I mean, they're turtles. They're so adorable. So I had to keep them. I made them a little pen down here, shoved them in. And uh, yeah, one of them almost fell off, which is kind of scary. And <laughs> I'm just stuck here watching one of the turtles basically shove the other one into the void. Like, I just... 
what am I supposed to do here? Eventually they stopped, so I was able to plug it all up so way none of them could fall in the void. But uh, yeah, I now had a couple of pet turtles. And to help grow my farm, I needed an infinite water source so I could saturate all of my soil. So I got my one ice that I had and I made a ritual and hoped to melt it. While I was waiting for that to melt, I started working on where I would place my farm. Fair warning, this place isn't gonna look amazing. Again, I'm not really a great builder or decorator or anything. But yeah, I did get that second water, so I did use that to help me kind of finish building my farming area here. And in the end, this is what it looks like. Not too bad, but certainly not amazing either. I used all of the seeds I had at the time to go ahead and plant all of those to get my farm started and use some torches to go ahead and light it up just that way no mobs can spawn here and help encourage them to grow. I also needed to expand my tree farm, so I used what would I had to expand off in the other direction. And this is where I would placing all of my dirt, as you can see, to work on a much, much bigger tree farm so that way I could get all the trees, all the wood to future get sticks to trade with villagers, but also to work on expanding my island. After mining, I finally came across my first diamond, but I wasn't really that interested in all that this phase had to offer, so I just mined it all the way, hoping to get on to my next phase here. I did eventually come across this fish here, which just started suffocating, which it's honestly kind of fantastic. Who needs fishes anyway? Before I reached the next phase, I had to get another monster party, built myself a little safe haven here in hopes to not die. We had some undead zombies throwing their tridents at me, and yeah, I died again. Killed the last zombie, and there we go. We managed to kind of survive our next zombie party. My dog almost didn't survive. You can see how close that trident was. I was a little scared for my dog. I certainly did not want to lose Bucky. So at this point, I decided I wanted to build this little, I guess, throne room area. Just a little pedestal, I guess, to display Bucky prominently. So there you go. Again, not an amazing builder, but I was proud of it. I like that little area. And with that, we could get back to mining, hopefully to bring us into our next phase. Before that though, I came across this musical chest, which actually gave me a music disc, and that gave me an idea. I used the one diamond that I got earlier to make a jukebox. <laughs> Who knows why I decided to waste it, but uh, yeah, I mean, I can't even play much of this audio for you. I'm gonna talk over it, because if YouTube hears it, they'll probably copyright strike me, so... Well, I guess we don't need to listen to music anyway. Oh, and the cows. <laughs> you guys saw nothing. Listen to me, cows. You saw nothing. That never happened. Good job. Finally, however, with a little bit more mining, we were able to get our benevolent gift, get nice buckets of cod and a trident. So that was able to get us to our next phase. I didn't actually want to continue mining right away. There were other projects I wanted to do, but it was still nice to have that upgrade there ready for when I wanted to go mining again in the future. And over the course of these few days, I did a ton of just little tasks, really, like chopping down all of my trees since now my farm was growing a lot. I did a little bit of farming, did a little bit of breeding, able to replace some of my carrots to get some more of that expanded my tree farm so that way I could grow trees at a much faster rate because wood was very very important to me took myself a little nap you know just a whole bunch of little stuff like that and at this point I really couldn't do anything else because I was waiting for crops to grow and trees to grow and stuff like that so I went ahead and afk for a couple of days and here's just one of the days that I was afk you can watch everything grow I just did this on repeat for a couple of days to get more wood trees crops stuff like that and unfortunately during the middle of the night something um happened now scrubbing through the footage here i have literally no idea what happened i could i can't hear anything i can't see anything but uh when i got back down boom all my pigs are zombie pigmen ha how i <laughs> i didn't hear any lightning in the recorded footage there was no messages in chat like there was an event I'm actually genuinely clueless, but yeah, I do not need zombie pigmen. I just went ahead and killed them, which is really, really annoying because I wanted to kill those pigs for food, but now I can't. So I have to rely on the mushroom soup from these mushroom cows. Now I wanted to actually start working on my house, so I started mining again more of my trees. I planted some spruce saplings as well, just to get some nice variety of wood to help me out. And after a couple of days of trial and error and building, as you can see, I'm very, very, very slow and very, very bad at building, but eventually I did land on a design I liked with a little bit of help from some YouTube tutorials. So yeah, this little platform over here initially is where I'm gonna transport all of the items items when I break them. I'm gonna line up some chests here with hoppers just to make everything more efficient and this is gonna be my house. Nice and circular house. I don't know why it's so big. I didn't need an area this big but yeah 
when I turn around, literally look at this. What is this? No bobs spawned on my island earlier, and now they're just all here. So I went to sleep to bring it to daytime, so hopefully some of them would just burn, and then I made my way over there to kill the rest. I, I really have no idea why mobs started to spawn all of the sudden just now. Yeah, killed all of them, got a ton of lighting, so that hopefully wouldn't happen again, and we were able to move on. And for demonstration's sake, here's what I was talking about. I want to break the blocks. The water should then carry all of those blocks that I break into these chests once I have enough iron to make hoppers to lead the blocks into these chests. Before, I would have to empty my inventory every 100 blocks or so just to continue mining. This should make it so I don't have to stop as much to empty my inventory. Then I went ahead, got more wood so I could finish the walls on my house, which my house, fair warning, is going to look horrible because I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'm a horrible builder. This is my house. It doesn't look that amazing. It's got walls and it's wood, so <laughs> that's really all I know how to do. It just, I really wish I was a better builder, but I'm just not. I've been playing this game for nearly 10 years and I am still an absolutely horrible horrible, horrible builder. And in like every other series I've done, of course I have to have my chests sorted. I hate just having clutter chests. So as you can see, I put all my chests in my house here, sorted everything, put signs on them all so I know where everything is, and I just felt so much better. And right as I went back to mining, I immediately got some parrots from this, which is absolutely amazing because I love parrots in Minecraft. They're just so adorable. So I went to my base, grabbed some seeds, and tamed all three of them, but here they are on my shoulder, and it's just absolutely amazing. And then, again, now I got a panda. And, I mean, pandas are completely useless like any other pet, but they just look so cute, and I love them. And I had an empty area where my pigs were, so I shoved that big, fat kung fu panda right into his pen where he would stay, where I could admire him and his absolute adorableness. And while I was mining, these dumb witches spawned, which was quite annoying, but they didn't really do that much damage to me other than a splash potion of poison, which I didn't really think anything about until a monster party started, and thanks to that poison I was on now half a heart so that was amazing so I ran like a little chicken that I am I got a bow and can I just say I am amazing at bow shots I mean look at that absolutely sniped that vex uncut footage watch me do it again here we go and boom I'm literally the greatest you can't tell me that I'm not so I took all of them out finished sorting up all of my chests from all of that loot that I got and I immediately went back to mining where I got my benevolent gift to yet again upgrade us to another phase of our one block here. That brings us to the red desert stage, which really doesn't give us much, or so I thought. It eventually would give us villagers. I didn't know that at the time, so I just went ahead and worked on other projects like expanding my farm here. I expanded this with jungle wood because I figured that was appropriate because on this area, I wanted to actually start growing a bamboo farm because if I was able to get an armorer villager, that would enable me to get diamond armor and a librarian would enable me to get bookshelves to get max level 30 enchanted armor. The only problem is I didn't have any sugarcane or anything to get a bookshelf to make a librarian, but that's a problem for another day. As you can see, I started my bamboo farm, continued my wood farm, and as I was hanging out these mobs, I got an idea for my next project, so I just took myself a quick nap so we could start on that project. And that is the sound of these mobs are literally so annoying. I can't stand them, dude. As I'm mining all day, just hear the mobs. So I just killed all the mushroom cows. I didn't need them anymore, really. I had other food. I saved two just in case as an emergency food supply. Maybe I could breed them later if need be. So I shoved them in with the panda and then I made a much bigger area and I lowered it to hopefully block out some of the audio from this mooing. And I just shoved all of my cows down in this little pen here. And now for the moment of truth, go over to my one block and you can't hear the cows fantastic i love it and next thing I decided to work on was a mob grinder. I really wanted the XP because again, I wanted level 30 enchanting and I obviously need a mob grinder for that. And just look at that MLG water. Every single time I got to the top, no fear, just MLG water. I'm literally the greatest at two things, bow shots and MLG water. You can't tell me otherwise, I'm amazing. So to make this, I used all the wood that I had. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. I did have to AFK some days, mine some more wood, stuff like that. Quite a lengthy process as this does require you to use a ton of wood. It doesn't necessarily have to be wood, 
but this is really the only resource I have. But after many, many, many days of building this thing, finally it was complete. I did eventually have to use spruce planks for this because I ran out of oak, but we did get it finished. And it doesn't look dark right now because I have full bright on, but this room is completely dark. And as soon as I leave, mobs should start spawning in here, flowing through the water and dropping down at 1 HP. So I... Okay, maybe I'm not the greatest at MLG water, but yeah, this mob grinder did work. The tutorial online I found was perfect. So they all dropped and they were one hit away from death. Unfortunately, some of them did die, so I decided to raise this up half slab so some of the mobs wouldn't die when falling. And there you go. Here's the pretty much finished project of me being able to kill them. And wow, mob spawned a ton. Right here, I was only escaped for like two minutes and there's like a hundred mobs in there already. This was an absolutely fan fantastic mob grinder that worked literally perfectly. Next up, I noticed all of my bamboo had fully grown, so I chopped it down. Which, that sound is easily one of the most satisfying things that ever added into Minecraft. I absolutely love it. And now having all of this excess bamboo, I could expand my bamboo farm a little bit more. I went back to my mob grinder after all of this, just to grab some more XP here, and yeah. Note to self, don't get too close to the mob grinder, otherwise creepers will explode and the mobs will keep falling and they will overrun your base and they will blow everything up. <laughs> so yeah, I eventually did get this entire thing under control after a little while and fixed it all up so that way that hopefully wouldn't happen ever again. I then spent some time decorating my island a little bit with leaves and stuff like that because it was looking a little barren and I wasn't a fan of it, but I'm also not really great at decorating. I did what I could and then it was finally time to go back to my and after a short little while, I actually got a villager, which is fantastic. His name is Donald. Say hi to Donald. Unfortunately, I didn't really have a breeding area for villagers right now. So that's immediately what I started working on. And I've said it so many times during this video that you're probably getting sick and tired of me saying it, but I'm no builder. So be prepared for this breeding area for villagers to look absolutely terrible. Cut forward a few days and yeah, I, I built a box. That's it. It's just a box. And now was the time to lead Donald into his new home. And you wouldn't think that would be very challenging, right? You just get him out of the cow pen and you push him over there and no problem. Nope. Took me like two minutes to get Donald out of the cow pen and he walked right back into the cow pen. I swear, I have the worst luck when it comes to villagers, so I got him out again. And where does he go? He goes to the pandas. Luckily, he didn't fall in, but he started to go back to the cows. So I tried to shove him and he kept on going back to the cows to the point that I literally had to block him off from going back to the cows. I don't know what this man's obsession was with cows, but literally he outsmarted me, got on top of my walls and immediately started going back towards the cows. I had to literally create a trap for him to fall in. Okay, that worked all well and fine until he realized, ooh, whoops, what's that? Oh, the panda exhibit's open? Let me hop in the panda exhibit. Eventually got him back out of that, trapped him up even better this time to try and lead him to his new home. And after literally like an entire day cycle, I finally got him into this dumb house. My goodness, do I hate villagers. They are just, they, they're, I mean, they're the most annoying thing added to the game. I swear, it's like they know what you want them to do and then they just do the opposite of that. But despite them being so annoying, I did decide to give them a little window here to look out, mainly just that way I could see if they ever grew up when I started breeding them. Next, I had enough iron finally for one hopper, so I went over to my chests here and added that hopper. And now when I broke blocks, hopefully they would be led by the water continuously until passing over that hopper and getting put into the chest, thus saving me time from having to empty my inventory over and over and over again. And once that was completed, I could finally go back to mining until there was a monster party, which broke my automated system, which I literally just built. I took on the monster party and this was actually the first monster party, I think in this entire playthrough so far, where I actually didn't die. So yeah, progress. I'm I'm getting better, guys. Finally killed the last pillager and there you go. No deaths. Went back to mining and I got another villager. So that was perfect. Finally, with this, I would be able to start breeding. This stupid pillager got in my way. So killed him, knocked him into the void. I turned my back for one second and the villager's gone. I assumed he just dropped into the void. I don't know. I, did, I never saw him. But once I got closer, I realized he just went to my bed. He was sleepy. Yeah, that actually gave me the idea. If I could just break the bed and then slowly start placing it towards the base, he would slowly start making his way there. And I didn't just have to shove him. He would just walk in. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier, but yeah, it worked literally flawlessly. He just walked into the base himself. Next, I wanted them to breed to give me baby villagers. So I threw some carrots at them because you need to make them willing. And to make them willing, you just feed them. So I did that. I gave them carrots and I hoped 
the would work. I'd never bred villagers before. And eventually, oh, 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 no, 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 this is wrong. I should, nope, 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 gonna do other things now. Okay, you two have fun, bye. I kept on mining in hopes of getting more villagers, as many as I could, and sure enough, I did eventually get a second villager. And the bed thing gave me an idea from earlier. If I placed a job site in the house, they should automatically walk to the house, which this villager did with my fletching table. So awesome, I now had a perfect plan to get any new villagers into the house. I eventually got a fourth villager, led them in, and there you go. I went back to mining, and sadly, I did upgrade, which means I would no longer be able to get villagers because we were going to the next phase. I, of course, wanted more villagers, so I needed these guys to breed. So I grabbed some extra carrots, stuff like that, threw it down, and hopefully they would breed. They haven't done it yet, except... Oh! There we go, finally got our first baby villager. Fantastic. But now all I needed really was sticks, so that way I could start trading with a fletching villager to get emeralds. Because what you do is you just get a ton of sticks, and then you trade those 32 sticks for emeralds. It is probably the most efficient and best trade in the game, which is why most everybody does it. So I decided to get rid of my tree farm and just use this entire area for bamboos because now I needed sticks. And I figured that bamboo would be better for getting sticks than just trees since how bamboo grew faster than regular saplings. So after doing a little bit more trading, I eventually did make an armor villager, which you have to upgrade him to mastery level for him to eventually offer you some diamond armor. So I had nothing else better to do but to mine blocks and AFK just waiting for all of my bamboo to grow. And while I was mining, these blazes spawned. I honestly forgot I was on the nether phase and that this could happen, but they got dumped in my water and they died pretty fast, except for the fact that they lit my entire base on fire. Maybe it wasn't exactly a great idea for my entire base to be out of wood. <laughs> Clearly, but it was really the only thing I had. I wasn't that upset until my panda got lit on fire and there was nothing I could do but sit and watch, unfortunately, as my poor pet panda died. I still did have one, but yeah. And then the next couple of days, I simply did some AFK farming with the bamboo here. Again, by far and away, one of the most satisfying sounds you can hear in the game. Turned all of those to sticks, traded with my several fletching villagers, and then traded that with Norman here, my armor villager, to upgrade him. I did make it so that way he would offer boots, which was the cheapest trade. I didn't need this many boots. I just simply needed him to get upgraded, and you had to trade anything with him just for that to happen. And very quickly, I upgraded him to Apprentice, but now he wanted 33 whole emeralds for one bell. So that meant I had to do a lot more AFKing, a lot more bamboo farming just to get him upgraded. As you can see, we've got ourselves a ton more sticks here to get a ton more emeralds. Went back to my base, grabbed my extra emeralds, and we got one bell, which didn't upgrade him that much, but yeah. It was one step closer, I guess. Like I said earlier, I wanted a librarian villager, but you need a lectern. And in order to make a lectern, you need one bookshelf. And I only had enough paper for one book, not one bookshelf. Water and traders can offer sugarcane, so I could start a sugarcane farm, but unfortunately, these guys didn't have any. So thank you, wandering villagers. The one time I wanted to trade with you, you literally didn't have the one thing that I wanted. So literally, all I could do right now was just sit and wait for all of this to grow. At this point, I was seriously beginning to question if it was actually worth it to upgrade this armor villager. I probably would have been better off maybe just mining to get the diamonds, but I was so far deep at this point trading with villagers that there was no turning back. I just had to stick with this process and hope it all panned out in the future. Did a ton more trading with each of the Fletchers. Once they didn't want to trade anymore, I just moved on to a new one. At this point, I realized I could use a bone meal on this bamboo so I didn't have to AFK. I could just forcibly grow it and then cut it all down. That's what I did for the next couple of days. I just sat at my mob grinder, killed some skeletons, got some bones for bone meal, grew all of that, and I was able to trade for several more bells. I also realized you could give rotten flesh to a cleric villager for some emeralds, so I made one of them a cleric because I had a ton of extra rotten flesh laying around, so that helped speed up the process a little bit. And finally, after a long, long time, Norman was upgraded to expert. I only needed to do one more trade with him to upgrade him to master, and you can see the little pink swirls there, meaning he's upgraded, and finally we could trade for full diamond armor. The enchantments really weren't that good, but that's not really what I was worried about. I mainly just wanted the armor. I could disenchant it with a grinder and then re-enchant it later. I mainly just actually needed it. So after a little bit more AFKing, a little bit more farming of bamboo, I was eventually able to get full diamond armor from Norman. 
And now my only problem left was figuring out how to get a bookshelf to make a librarian villager. And that's when I actually remembered something. When you trade with piglins in Minecraft, they can actually give you soul speed books. So if I can go to the nether, trade with piglins, they give me soul speed books, I can then disenchant those books to make a bookcase to make a librarian. It was a complicated process, but I think it would actually work. And I decided to make the portal in the corner of my house here because I, my house was huge and I had all the room and there was nowhere else better to put it. Hoping it wouldn't take me too long to find a bastion and it literally didn't. Like 20 blocks away from my portal. Boom. Bastion. I quickly found the chests. They didn't really have that great loot in them. They had a little bit of gold, but other than that, nothing else. And I realized that this was a bridges bastion, so there should be on one of the ends of this bridge here. So I got rid of those hog clans so they'd stop messing with me, and sure enough, there was gold on the one end of this bridge. After mining all of that, I literally had two and a half stacks of gold. So I just had to trade all of that and hope and pray that I would get three enchanted books out of this. I mean, surely I should, right? It's two and a half stacks of gold. I mean, if I didn't, I was actually going to be so disappointed. But after trading away probably about 80% of the gold, I eventually did get that third soul speed book. And I also got a ton, ton of emeralds out of this. I mean, look at that. Look at all those emeralds. I'm about to be called out for cheating for all the emeralds I got up in here. But I ultimately had no reason to stay in the nether anymore as I got all three books. So I just left the piglins there with the gold because I honestly didn't even want any of their trades. So disenchanted all of the books turned that into a bookshelf, used that bookshelf to turn that into a lectern, and went to go place that in my villager breeding room until I realized that I had no available villager to turn into a librarian, so I had to start the whole breeding process all over again. So I got some bread, chucked it down at them, and hoped they would breed. While I was waiting for that to happen, I went mining, and I actually ended up upgrading my one block to the next phase, which is idle. No idea what that means, but <laughs> that's phase eight, I guess. Use some of my bone meal to advance my wheat farm again to get bread to throw with the villagers hopefully to make them willing to give me another baby villager so I could get a librarian. These iron golems kept spawning I have no idea why so I decided to take them on. I mean it was free easy iron now that I had diamond armor I wasn't really that scared except I was scared as you can see I ran away from him. After all this time I figured it was finally time to start killing cows and get an actual proper food source since I was running low on carrots so took them all out started cooking all that. At this point I wanted to make an enchanting table except I was done with the nether process on my one block so I couldn't get any more obsidian. So literally my only possibility of getting obsidian was I had to go to the nether to get my lava. Do you guys suppose I'll live this drop? Yeah I think I'll live this drop. Might as well just send it. Yeah we're fine. Okay. So I went to the bottom, got my lava, made my way all the way back up back to my base, turned all of that lava into obsidian, and got my enchanting table. I placed it in the corner of my base and just outlined where the bookshelves would go once I got them in the future. Went back to my librarian breeding pen and as you can see I did have a baby villager. All I needed for them was to grow up and they would turn into a librarian. So while I waited for that I did more farming, grew some more bamboo so I could get more sticks so I can get more emeralds. It was a whole process. It was quite but it eventually did pan out. The villager grew up. They were a librarian. I had a ton of emeralds and I decided while I was at it I might as well have this librarian offer me a mending book which the way you do that is you just break and replace a lectern over and over and over again until they eventually offer you mending. So that's what I did. And eventually they did offer me mending. And as you can see, they also did offer me nine emeralds for a bookshelf. So it was really the perfect trade. I traded initially for the bookshelf just to lock in that trade. I got myself three bookshelves, placed those back down at my base. And I already really had all of the emeralds that I need from all the FKing. I just needed a little bit more emeralds for the final three books that I needed. So grabbed those, went back to my base, and placed in those final three bookshelves. And finally, after literally nearly 90 days, I could do level 30 enchanting. First thing I wanted to enchant was my pickaxe. So I made a brand new pickaxe and literally my first enchant was perfect. What the heck? I never get this lucky with enchanting, literally ever. And my very first enchant with this pickaxe was perfect. The best enchant you could possibly get from a just regular level 30 enchant. This thing broke through the blocks so fast and it was gonna make upgrading these last couple of phases so much faster and so much easier. Unfortunately, however, I noticed that the fortune didn't actually multiply how many blocks blocks you got from the one block. So I got an idea. What if I got silk touch to just get the raw blocks and then I could place them down 
and then use the fortune. So I tested out my theory. I used silk touch and the silk touch did work. It actually gave me the raw block. So either way, I could just grab it out, place it down, then use my fortune. And that one actually worked to help multiply my blocks here. So went back to mining with my fortune and again, very, very, very quickly upgraded to my next phase. Use my fortune to mine all of the emeralds and diamonds that I got from the silk touch. And wow, that is a surplus of diamonds. I wish I thought of this earlier. This would have made my day so much easier. <laughs> Upgraded that to phase nine, only two phases away from the end portal. I knew I was going to have to do a lot of mining. So I went to my librarian, got a couple of mending books to apply those to my pickaxes because if you don't know what mending is basically when you pick up xp it just repairs your pickaxe or whatever you have enchanted mending so that item will literally never break so if you want to look in my second slot there you can see my item is getting repaired as i'm picking up the xp so that was honestly just fantastic i also got a base enchantment on my sword of sharpness and fire aspect but it was missing on breaking so with my one extra book that i had i went ahead and enchanted it over and over again till i can apply the unbreaking to my sword because i figured why not i didn't want it to break and might as well just go for it and then while i was here now it was time to get level 30 enchantment for all of my pieces of armor i didn't really care too much what was on the armor as long as it was some form of protection i'd be fine with that so i just used my op mob grinder to get all of the levels that i needed enchanted all of my armor until eventually it was all protection except for the boots but the boots had feather falling so i'd live with it it was fine and now i wanted to max out my one block so i sorted all of my chests so that way i could just continuously mine when i did that i actually realized i had a name tag so i used that to name my dog bucky the oldest pet that i had so there you go bucky it's official you're finally actually named my chest are all sorted and I officially have no more projects left other than to kill the ender dragon and I honestly don't have very long to do that at this point I believe I was on day 92 and I had to upgrade this thing like two full levels and these stupid mobs kept spawning but luckily I had my OP sword to help me out with that and eventually I would get an OP bow to help me out as well and that's all we did for the next several days until finally my one block upgraded to the final phase and once i finished with this phase it should give me the end portal because this is phase 10 the end so i started mining that with my op pickaxe super super quick again i was really starting to worry i wouldn't be able to get to the end by day 100 but after a day or two the mob party spawned and i knew that meant i was getting very very close to ending this phase because monster parties always started near the end of a phase and i got lifted into the air meaning this mob party was super easy all these stupid endermite just went below me so i just shot my bow down at him making the very last monster party easily the easiest of them all cleared out the rest of the mobs here really wasn't scared of any of these mobs thanks to all of my armor and i was able to get back to mining and finally near the end of day 98 after clearing out all of these stupid mobs i got my end portal Thankfully, it was already filled in with most all of the eyes I needed because I did not have enough blaze powder to get the rest of the eyes of Ender, but I only needed four, so that was stupidly simple. So on day 99, I prepared to go into the end. There was a few things I was missing. I wanted to repair what items I had, get some golden apples, get a totem of undying just in case, and we made our way into the end to take on the Ender Dragon. And after this, just go ahead and enjoy my absolutely amazing bow shots. Literally the greatest. Again, you can't tell me I'm not. Look at these bow shots. Until I actually start shooting at the Ender Dragon. Yeah, I just, I, I, I don't have words for how embarrassing this, this is. How I missed th that many shots in a row. It's laid directly above me and I can't hit it. I don't know what's wrong with me, but <laughs> I got a couple hits. And thankfully I had my OP sword to go ahead and fill in the rest of this. So you guys obviously already know what's happening here. It's an ender dragon fight. You don't really need me to commentate that and what's going on. So I'll just go ahead and shut up here and let you enjoy the last bit of the fight. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, I'm so good at bow shots. I just, I, I had to trick shot for the final shot. Cause I mean, why not? I just had to style on the poor ender dragon. So yeah, completed the fight. Just barely on day 100 was I able to complete this fight. Went ahead, grabbed that torch. So that way I could grab the egg. Because I mean, how can you not grab the egg? It's just style points. Again, you kill the ender dragon, you steal its egg. Uh, it's just the things that you do, you know? Poor Ender Dragon, honestly. Grabbed that egg, grabbed all of this XP, which I didn't really need, but might as well grab it. It's free XP. Sadly, could not go to the end city to find Elytra, because as soon as I got back to my base, it was nighttime of day 100. It was literally only about five minutes away from being daytime on day 101. That is how close I was cutting this. So yeah, immediately headed back into my portal to go back home. And as you can see, this is my final base and how everything turned out after 100 days. My nice villager breeding farm in here, my farms in the corners, all of my pets and everything. It doesn't look absolutely fantastic because I'm no good builder, but I was proud of it and I did seriously have a ton of fun doing this. Minecraft one block is seriously one of the most interesting, unique challenges I have ever done. I had so much fun with this and if you want to play, I would highly, highly, highly encourage you guys play one block. It was very fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And as always, I grabbed my first pet so that way they could sleep near me on my final night because this pet means the most to me out of anything. It means more to me than literally uh, you guys. No, I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bye.